Welcome to Marketplace in Action. Giving you hope for your following purposes. Breaking down the words to uncover the promises that God has for your life. Building your faith for those promises. Welcome to Marketplace in Action. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Ken. With me is Pastor Anthony. Hello, hello. Boy, do I have some guests tonight, and I can't wait to get into this. Now, today is the first January, the first month of the year, which means unity. So we're all in unity here, but the special day for the ninth, ninth means visitation. So we're believing for you folks that are out there to stretch your hands out to us, Thank that you. visitation will come by the Spirit. And 17, 2017 means victory. <clears throat> so we're guaranteed the victory. So let me jump right into it. We're still talking about the famine in the land, which is God's word, and that's in Amos 8, 11 through 12. And I'll bring my guests, and I'll introduce them as we go. Now, there's a, it's broken down the word. And there's a story in 2 Kings 4, and you can look it up for yourself. And let me give you the list of characters the true minister is Elijah, that's the prophet. The false minister is t prophet, how do you pronounce that word? Geasia. Geasia. That's the false minister, that's his servant. The third is the church in general, which is the woman. And the son is us individually as church members. So watch this. The woman perceives the son is dead. So she lays the son in the prophet's bed. Now remember back a few sentences in the Bible. It talks about the woman had a special guest room built for the prophet so he could come and rest and eat and before he did meetings or did whatever he was going to do. So it was a special place for him that she honored him with. And the husband, as it goes through the story, is kind of there but not really. Isn't that the outside looking in? kind of looking at the church, but really not knowing what's going on, but going along with it. Isn't that, how many times have we been around mm -hmm. places where we're in the church, we talk about the church, but people like the husband oh. says, you know, we're going to do this or that, and they just go, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds good, but are they really listening? So watch this. So the son has perished, and in fact, a few verses before that, the son had died in the, well, supposedly died in the husband's arms, the father's arms. Why? Because he doesn't know what to do. He's outside the church. He has no idea spiritually what happened. But it's the fiery darts. I want to show you this in Ephesians 6.16. So he comes, of course, to the church, which is the mother. The church in general is the mother, which is the woman. So the, he gives her the son. She rushes him upstairs to the prophet's house to lay him out. Now, isn't this typical? The church in general comes to the church and says, help, help, help my son or whoever is hurt, perished, or you know, spiritually dead. That's what that means. It says without voice or hearing. Isn't that what the world is, without voice or hearing? Think about it for a minute. So she lays him out, nothing happens. She immediately knows what to do. She tells the husband, he says, he asks all these questions. She shushes him and says, get me a donkey. And she goes 15 plus miles to see the prophet. Now, the mm -hmm. prophet, and I think this is where I want to bring Pastor or Prophet Jeff in, the prophet, always gazing, always looking ahead, I feel the anointing so strong when I said that, sees her from a distance and says to his servant, go out and see if we can help her. So do you see that in your ministry, prophet? And by the way, the prophet's going to be speaking for us next week. You don't want to miss that. He's got a special edition of Marketplace and Advent with Pastor Anthony. The prophet, tell us what that means to you as he's looking and gazing and sees the, the woman coming from afar and sends the, his uh, servant out. Yeah, I, it's just, it's talking about relationship. I, I feel like he was willing to go because she saw a need. And so whether it be a, a, a mi whatever ministry we're in, it's do we see a need and then go after it? It was hunger. We see great revival in, in Africa and these nations, these great nations, but why don't we see it in America? I believe it was because the woman was hungry. And when you're hungry, you pull. You draw on the prophetic. You draw on the prophet. That's what she did. It was her hunger that drew it out. And so I just want to encourage you, stay hungry. It is a gift. 
It is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's really what I feel for, for today is stay hungry, you know, and you will see God move in miraculous ways. Well put. Mm -hmm. So watch this. So she brushes the sermon aside and throws herself at the feet of the prophet. Now watch this. Submission, hungry for the true minister, the, the true word of God. So when, when you see this act of humili not, uh, humility, is the word I'm looking for, as she hugs him and says, tells him the story about her son has perished, and the prophet leaps into action and sends his servant to save the young boy. So the servant, that's the false minister, comes up. And, and remember, he's at the church, if you will. That's the, that's the symbol of the prophet's room. That's the symbol of all his belongings there. That's, you know, the assembly of the church. And still nothing's happening. So he lays his rod, the instrument. In other words, the Bible. That would be sword of the spirit for the minister, the preacher, the prophet in today's church. He lays it over the young boy and nothing happens. So he just, ah, nothing's going to happen. He's dead. So he comes back to tell the prophet. Mm -hmm. And the prophet won't take no for an answer. And that's what I'm talking about, the true minister. He wars on your soul. He's worried about each and every person of his that's congregation. Good. He wants to encourage and speak life into him. So what does he do? And I'm going to bring in Pastor Anthony. What does he do? He rushes into action. He jumps in. First, he closes the door because it's a private affair. Now, you wouldn't want your dirty laundry or things that were happening with you to come into the church and leave it to the public. You would do it behind closed doors. That's what he did. That's the first good thing. And Jesus did that all the time. Second thing is he laid a cross. First, he invited God in. That's the power. The power source, we have to be connected. How do we know? Because God is all power. He does all good things from the heaven above. So God had to speak through. He invited God to speak through him. He knew where his power source was. So he laid across him to give him warmth. It was eye to eye, mouth to mouth. Now watch this. It says in the word, it says, he had no voice or no hearing. Isn't that what's going on in the church today? Mm -hmm. Because of the fiery darts, watch this, he was overwhelmed. There was no support. The dad was the spiritual head, and he didn't know anything about the church. He didn't know anything about anything as far as spiritual matters. So Elijah had to speak into him, breathe into him to try to rekindle his breath. So it didn't work the first time, and that's what I'm talking about, the experience true minister. He got up and started praying again and did it again and again. Now, as you see, and I'll, and I'll close with this thought and, and continue this story, is he sneezes seven times. Seven means perfection. So that was a mini deliverance. In other words, he repented seven times. When you sneeze, what does that do? That releases, that cleans you, that releases your sinus, your, your, what's in your head, your mouth. It releases you from not once, but seven. Seven means, rep uh, means perfection. He was repentant seven times, if you will. Pastor, speak into that, how the prophet would not give up the true minister to the ailing church. I mean, yeah. isn't that what's going on now? That's exactly. And Dr. Kim, this is perfect for this new year. Yes. 2017, here we go. This is the age, and this is the time where we're no longer going to live by the church model that has been, you know, predominant in the past 20, 30 years. And what I mean by that is look at how the church has been in the, in the past. And people go there. We're all hurt. We're all in need. Everyone needs a miracle in every way. And we all go there hoping to find a miracle and hoping to find something. Oh, my life needs it. I need it. It's like a giant, you know, community of self-help seeking people. But what this year is moving into something different is those people. Let me tell you out there, every viewer out there, there is someone in this world that's worse off than you are. No matter how bad your problems are, no matter how, oh, I don't have, I need finances, I have to pay bills, I have to do all these things, I'm sick, I'm family sick, we're dying, oh, there is someone out there worse than you are. And you can either complain about your problems and you can try and find people to help you and gratify you, or you can say, God, there's someone else out there that needs your love and you are fully equipped to do that at this time. And that's what's happening. People who are pressing on, they don't look at all the circumstances of their life, they say, no, God has spoken, God's promises are true, and I have the faith. It didn't work the first time, I'm gonna keep going, and I'm gonna pray again, and I'm gonna seek God farther, and I'm gonna go. And that's when the miracles are gonna take place, and that's when the kingdom of God is gonna manifest here on this earth, when more and more people wake up to the fact that it's not about me, 
It's not about my needs. I am blessed. God has given me breath. God has given me this life. I'm alive. I'm here Mm -hmm. on this earth, and I have a mission and a purpose. And it is time for those people to go out and to start to do the miracles where the dead rise, where people's where the kingdom comes and where healing and restoration takes place. It's time. You are equipped. You've been listening. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been doing all these things. And it's no longer time to sit there and wait for your miracle. It is time to go out there and make someone else have a miracle in their life. Oh, that's right on. Mm-hmm. It's 1 Corinthians 1, 18, 21. We need a voice, as Pastor said. We need a preacher, a true minister yes. of God, to make the message clear. Now, faith comes by hearing. I want to encourage you with this. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, but watch this. God is worshipped by spirit and truth, so it requires us searching the scriptures to verify the preacher's words are true, Acts 17, 11. We, who cannot know the true God unless one knows the truth of God? True. I'm going to bring in our good, evangelist, Natalie. Please tell us, in your opinion, as you search the scriptures, I know you do a lot of meetings, do you find that to be true that you verify it by knowing what the word is. Absolutely. I can tell you a story. I I visited a church and everything seemed perfect. The worship was amazing. Just everything about it was amazing until the pastor began to open his mouth. And he preached a very well-received sermon that everybody was, amen, brother. But apparently nobody in that church knew the word of God for themselves because what he was preaching was unscriptural. And I actually prayed and wow. asked the Lord to give me the opportunity to speak to him. And nothing happened that day. But later in the week, I got a uh, postcard thanking me for coming to the church and giving me the phone number. And I gave him a call. And he, was, he had said he was going to finish the sermon the next week. And uh, when I called, he said he was working on the sermon. And when I shared with him my objection scripturally to what he had preached... He said, well, everybody really loved it. And I said, well, okay, you know, I'll come back to church on Sunday. I kind of, I'm thinking I'll give him another chance. Well, when I went back, he couldn't preach in front of me. And he literally, he prayed for everybody there that particular day, you know, the choir and everybody got prayed for. And I thought, okay, this is just not for me. But I could not believe that this entire beautiful body of Christians did not know the word of God. It is Mm. critical that we know it for ourselves. Very shortly after that, that church broke apart. And it's very clear to me why, because there was untruth being sown by a well-meaning but erring minister. So what do you think, Dr. Ken? That's well put. Hebrews 3, 15 and 18, in regards to faith, we understand the Bible means by frequent hearing. Paul talks about it uh, today, pressing into his voice. If we do not hear the sound of his voice, if we don't understand what God wants and learn what Paul said in his preaching and teaching, he's urging us to take time to get in, to see, to grasp what God is teaching. Hebrews 17 goes on, 317 goes on to help us reach a conclusion about God's intention regarding hearing. But when we physically study it, we also read it and hear it through reading the word. So it's very important we understand the preaching of even when we hear ministers preach the word. I'll bring the prophet in. In a biblical sense, as we preach the word, we are sent to preach it. In your opinion, hearing the word of God, is that where the faith starts coming? Yeah, and I I just want (coughs) to, what Natalie was saying is, it's just so important to know and understand the word. We've been just going over it and going over the importance of the word of God. (coughs) And I really believe is God wants to take us from servants to friends. That's right. That's John good. 15, 15 says it like this. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you friends, for all things that I've heard from my father I've made known to you. It's about a relationship. And in my sense, uh, you, you know, later if we read on in 2 Kings 5.20, where Gieza, he fell. He, he, he fell. It said... Um, he went, ran after the man, there was a healing, and he went after money. He was running after the wrong thing. And see, we can be an heir, maybe it's wrong doctrine, or we have a wrong That's motive good. of heart. That's but really we're running good. after the wrong things. And so, uh, just, it's about a heart condition. And see, I love what you were just saying, is the importance of the word and knowing it. 
and just in closing, and I'll hand it back to Ken, is the importance of a friend knows the intimate details. If I'm friends with you, I know your dreams. I know what you like. I know your favorite foods, your favorite color. And God calls us friends. How much more should we just love and just be in that place of intimacy with God? And so I just want to encourage you today to be a friend of God. Amen. That's well done. Amen. Very good. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And we give the address and the scriptures so you can look it up for yourself. We Sometimes we get different revelation. You just hear us speak. It comes from your head knowledge. But once you grasp these scriptures and start reading them and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal them, the revelation will come. Now you want it. Now you can preach. Yes. And I'll give you a why. Yes. There is a wide open door for great work here, although many oppose me. So be prepared. You have to be prepared with the word yes. that you know that as you get the revelation, the enemy is going to come in to yes. mm. discourage you. Wouldn't you agree, Pastor Anthony? Yes, and it's the time, again, not to just, you know, the word has to be in you, like you just said. Good and word, it sir. can't be in our heads. That's the whole thing. Jesus came to tell the preachers of the day that exact thing. He's like, you know the word in your head. You know the law better than anyone else on the, pla on the planet, but still it's not in your heart and you're a bunch of vipers. You don't get it, do you? Because it has to be in your heart. Psalm says that we are led to the kingdom by the word that's in our hearts. Our light, our path is lit before us when God's word is in our hearts, not in our minds. You know, and even like, I like that you talked on John 15. I got one here that we have to remain in God. And God, it's John 15, 7. We remain in God. And if God remains in us, if God's word is in our hearts, not in our minds, then we can come to him and ask for anything. Like we always hear these people, oh, God, I ask God for this blessing and nothing happens and nothing. And like, what are you, is God's word in your heart? It, does God live in you? Yeah, come That's on. like going and buying a brand new car and filling it with water instead of gasoline. And well, it didn't work. I bought this brand new car. It's supposed to work and be fine. What's wrong? What's wrong with it? I spent all this money. Well, you didn't even put gasoline in it. You put water in it, and it's not going to run. So we can't just ask God to bless us and do all these things if we're not living by his word, if his life isn't enlightened inside of us. I mean, we have to have that for things to function properly. Well, that's I well mean, done. Right? I want to say this, it's in Luke 12, 48, it talks about great gifts mean great responsibility. The greater the gifts, the greater the responsibility. Yes. So I want to bring it back to our evangelists, Natalie, since we as ministers always, or God gives us gifts for a greater purpose, wouldn't you agree that's a great responsibility and we have to take it seriously as we speak to others and their purposes and calling. Absolutely, Dr. Ken. I know that we have to take our gifts very seriously. One of the things that I see so often in ministry is I'll see somebody starting to come up in ministry and I will start praying for them against sexual sin because the enemy was so quick mm. to take people down yes. Yes. in that way. But one of the things that's on my heart right now, and um, you really just said that a moment ago about being a friend of God. I no longer call you servant, I call you friend. But at the same time, Jesus served. And he washed the feet of his disciples. Mm. And I'm a businesswoman. I really have starting to look for ways to serve others. I have many people that serve me in my business. I give them rides to and from work some of the time. I'm looking for ways to serve in the church as a way of honoring others. I just saw a multi-million dollar businesswoman uh, serving in the nursery at church last Sunday. And my mouth was a little bit open, to be honest with you. I, but I think that that is something that we've been lacking and need to bring back. We've known it and mm -hmm. we've fallen away. But the truth is, it says, if you want to be the greatest, you need to be the least. So I really encourage people to serve so that we can honor the gifts that God has given us and that he can multiply them in us. What do you think, Dr. Ken? Well put. Now, because of time, I'm going to give you one last thought, and I want everybody in 30 seconds to 60 to comment on it. It's in uh, Psalm 73, 1 through 17, and I, this is such revelation. Misjudging the reality of the situation for the time until God reveals the truth. How many times we all can say amen to this? The wicked appear to prosper. They're always considered 
merely in the surface, they always seem like they have so much money, they have so much going on, they have the better house, the better car, they have everything on, the better looking mate, the better children, blah, blah, blah. But wait, we're the righteousness of God. What happened? How come we don't have anything? God, what are you doing? How dare you? Where's my time? That's where the sin comes in. We're blaming him. We don't understand what they're going through. It says in his word that the righteous will always get their just reward, and so will the wicked. They will be judged. I'm not cursing anybody. I'm just saying. So don't, it might appear like they have everything going on. I know in the marketplace, we can all say to this, there's always that person that looks so special, looks like they're going on. But I know a lot of them secretly have health problems. They have marital problems. Their kids are out of control. I mean, the list is endless. I want to encourage you here, please do not give up. It takes constant repentance on our part, understand that just like in the story we gave, how the boy sneezed seven times, we have to always check our hearts and say, we can't judge the world on how it's judged by how we see it. Or, you know, when I was growing up in the church, it always talked about, you know, I don't want to judge others, so I'll just judge myself. But that's even wrong. We have to judge ourselves compared to what Jesus was like. Right. So too many times we're so, I, I'm guilty of this, you know, how many times we say, oh, that person, look what they're doing, how they, I've been a millionaire twice, and I'm always thinking, well, God, why, you know, I had it once, if you had it once, you can do it again, and God won't give you something that you haven't done it before, so I want to, uh, staff, uh, people, marketplace, ministers, please, we'll start with Pastor Anthony, tell us in 30 seconds or less why, what are we doing wrong, where would the uh, pitfall would be when we see these people that are not righteous, living for the devil, and all of a sudden they're prospering? Your comment. Um, I remember that story where the guy's praying, he's driving, and he's praying for a parking space and says, God, I really need a parking space. I'm late for my meeting and I need one right now. God, please, I, I trust in you. Turns the corner and th there's a parking space right there. Amen. And he goes, Oh, never mind, God, I found one. <laughs> you know, and so <laughs> that's uh, it. I think if, what if God gave us everything we wanted? What if God gave you everything you wanted and beyond right now? <laughs> would your faith increase in God or would you start to rely on God less? God That's good. wants your heart more than he cares about your soul, good more word, than he cares about goodness. you having earthly things. And I'll close with what Jesus said, is that the wicked have the reward here on heaven, but or the, the wicked have their reward here on earth, but our treasure is in heaven. Now, do we have the faith to believe that that treasure in heaven is much greater, far beyond any treasure on earth that we could ever have? Excellent word, Pastor. Prophet? Yeah, I just love that. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's called our advocate, our teacher. So why don't you just let him teach you? Why don't you actually be spirit-led? Why don't you let him lead you in all that you do? Wow. Well put. Evangelist? I've got two real short stories. I had a neighbor that her sister was a drug dealer, and she had a red Corvette, and she had it all going on, and I'm this little impoverished mother. And the Lord said to me, Natalie, she is like the grass here today, gone tomorrow. Mm. And another story that happened to me, everybody next to me, I'm driving and I had the old ugly station wagon and I had 19 kids, not all at one time, that's a long story. Wow. But here's minivan, 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 minivan next to me and I wanted a minivan. And the Lord said to me, why are you worshiping money? Mm. And I didn't realize that that desire within me was worshiping money over Still. God. And that really helped me lay things down wow. and get my focus right. Well put, guys. Wow. I want to close with this, and don't forget to watch us at 4.30. The prophet's going to come with Pastor Anthony and tell us some information, not only about the famine Jesus. in the land, but how Jesus conquers. I'll close with this. Release the spirit of burning to burn up works of darkness. Yes. Psalms 140.10. Make a minister of you out there of fire. Hebrews 1, 7, let your word be preached like fire. Jeremiah 23, 29, it's like a hammer with rocks. Preach it like you have a hammer in your hand. And the last thought, let fire be in the presence and be released in your life. Psalms 97, 5. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken, my esteemed guests. Come see the prophet and pastor next week. We'll see you next Marketplace week. God bless you. God bless.